Welcome to another Movie Monday. Um, these two decided to subject themselves to watching a bunch of um, Hollywood blockbusters that tanked for multiple reasons. And then some. And yep. then some. So the first one that they decided to watch is Avatar The Last Airbender, the movie yep. by M. Night Shyamalan. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you guys have any opening things that you want to say before I go to my interview question? Should I say the one thing that outraged me? I don't... Well, with the, the one Besides thing? Besides the fact that everyone's fucking white. Wait, the one thing? I don't wait, 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 you'll come back to the white question. Well, okay, whatever. Enough, actually, well, okay, then actually say... Question. Maya, say your thing, because I actually don't know what you're going to say now. They made up a swim! Okay. <laughs> Papa swims in this movie and he's a sky bison! They make him swim to the North Pole! That is animal cruelty! Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Alright, uh, I, I guess I guess I will begin with my questions. I have prepared ten questions for you guys. Whether or not we'll actually get to the ten questions is okay. up for debate. But <laughs> We're gonna see if this interview style works for all of the other ones. Who so. knows? Okay. Yeah, um, okay, so just a forewarning, I kind of did not go with the very obvious things that I, I could obviously ask about, like, how they pronounce things and stuff like that, but that's stuff everyone knows, so we're gonna gloss over that. But speaking of that, first question is, between the name pronunciations and the very obvious whitewashing, which annoyed you more? The whitewashing because at least the name thing we could make fun of it hmm. um you know wait valen should we just like say everyone's names as they're said in the movie to just sure okay bastardize it so there's more. let's see okay. there's ong there's oh. uh soka, soka and ito <laughs> i think that's it oh. although i just started calling Qatar cataract just because i felt like it but like you know <laughs> oh my god um, but yeah, I, the thing is, it doesn't even make sense, though. Like, because even in, like, the Water Tribe, it's like, yeah, like, Sokka, Katara are white, but, like, the other, like, random terms in the background are there Asian. There are Inuit people, or at least, like, Asian-looking people. It's they really? could be Mongols, yeah. I'm not sure. But, then but when there they get... are Asians. <laughs> but then when they get to the Northern Water Tribe, then they're, like, all white again, so... Everyone's Russian or something! <laughs> it's, like, it's, yeah, it's, like, inconsistent as fuck, so... <laughs> The tannest person they made in the Water Tribe is Yue, and Yue is like, is it? At least I'm. I'm not. Re I don't remember. But is she the palest of the Water People, Water Tribe people? I I don't re like because again, obviously the hair, but I don't remember like. Here's the, let me just fucking Google an image. I don't remember either, but <laughs> Yue has the the most tanned skin. I mean, it's not that tan, but yeah, but it's still the most tan because she's like. Latina. Okay, well, she is, like, the lightest, I guess. She is lighter. She's decently fair compared okay. to the others. Still. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she yeah. She had the tan is tan. Oh, boy. That's so, not saying much. I, I guess the conclusion to that question is the whitewash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, second question. What was the scene where CGI was basically at its worst in the movie. The fence pose? Oh, yeah. There probably. There's a scene where, like, uh, it's when Ong's like, Ong, oh my god, see, now I'm fucking Ong. getting messed up. <laughs> um, he, he, he's, like, being tested for his waterbending abilities, and, like, the... Re remember, like, the, the sexist waterbender teacher guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's just, like, there, and he's, like, a nice dude, and he's there for, like, a minute. But anyway, um, oh yeah. So, but he's, like, testing him, and he does this thing where he's, like, it seems like he's, like, surrounding him by, like, ice, but it literally looks like fence posts. It looks, like, <laughs> really weird. But, oh, no, honestly, oh the, the thing that's the worst, though, is there are several moments where, like, they're doing, like, you know, the fucking dance moves, but, like, nothing happens. So it's, like, yeah, did they just, like, forget... Did they, like, forget to put in the effect or something? It takes so long for anyone to do, like, their bending thing that I'm just, like, there, it's more practical for people to just, like, get swords and just go up and whack each other. Even... It's going to take 
20 minutes to cast like three spells or something right? even even that like you know okay fine but like i swear there are moments where like they're doing the moves but nothing happens and like there, exactly. there's no point of for the scene to do anything so it's like what did you forget to do the effect oh my god and then i don't i know people sometimes talk about this but firebenders they can summon flames from their bodies right in this movie you need to bring around like burners and set bonfires to be able to fire bend. They literally turn it into a plot point because that when Iro like does that like normally or whatever, everyone's like, "Wait, he could do that?" And we're like, "Oh my god!" So yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so inconsistent. Also, also, okay. You know the like the finale of season one has like basically Aang summons like a giant like fucking like water monster thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That just doesn't happen. What? He just literally he just... just brings up a giant ass wave, and then he doesn't even drop the wave on the ships. The ships just like get scared and like turn around or something, and like then and, he like, drops the wave. We don't know wave. what happened to the Fire Nation soldiers inside the city because he didn't even like flood the city. Yeah, so they're just like there, and then they're just not. So. <laughs> Did they get like raptured? Did they get abducted by aliens? <laughs> We're not sure. Oh my god! <laughs> signs? Is it signs crossover? <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> It's all, it's all connected. <laughs> um. Okay, this one. Can you name at least three character traits shown in the movie for any of the main characters? So, like, on Katara, um, Silka. Okay. Uh, bored, confused, <laughs> and inept. <laughs> for all of them. <laughs> oh, no, that's oh, all it. Eero is really, really, really be hell bent on trying to get Z Zuko to go on a date. Oh yeah, him. like literally, like what? half of his lines are about like, "Hey Zuko, there's some like girls here," or like, and then like <laughs> shit like that. It's really weird. <laughs> he says it like multiple times, and you're just like, "What? <laughs> Why?" It's so weird. Oh, so yeah, um. Princess U8. When we count, we counted. She has seventeen lines, and half of them are like the moment where she like sacrifices herself. Yeah. So really, yeah. Um, UA is just there. I mean, to, to be fair, to be fair, quote unquote, like UA was not handled that well in the show either. But like, yeah, it's yeah, it's worse here. So um, somehow, yeah. And then also like, um, okay, I just want to say that. So obvious. Okay, here's the thing. At first, I, I, I happened to look up something before we watched the movie, that I'm like, how long is this movie? Because I'm like, if this is like two and a half hours, I'm going to die. But the thing is, the movie's only an hour and 40 minutes. So at first, I was like, oh, okay, good. But then I was like, how the fuck do they fit a season's worth of plot into an hour and 40 minutes? And the thing is, they don't even try. Like, okay, literally, the plot is, like, the beginning, which is, like, really shortened down. Then, like... Yeah you have basically, like, the prison episode, but it's not even, like, how it was. It was basically just, here's, like, Earth people just, like, sitting in, like, a fucking, like, canyon with Earth everywhere. <laughs> and then, like, Aang just walks up and is like, you're all Earthbenders! And they're like, oh, yeah. And then they, like, throw stones at the fire people. and whatever. So it's, like, really <laughs> shitty. So there's that happens. Then, um... It's, like, the blue spirit. Then there's the blue spirit stuff. That happens, like, for, like, ten minutes. Okay. And hmm, then... Fucking fight. And then they just go... To the Northern Water Tribe. They literally, they go to the Water Tribe, Northern Water Tribe, after 54 minutes. Oh, so well, literally- like, Almost <laughs> half of the movie is just those, like, what, two or three episodes at the yeah. end of book one. So basically, yeah. So like six, 17 episodes of the show are condensed into 54 minutes. And probably like a third of that time is dedicated to like the first like four or five episodes. And like- the, all what? of the exposition either does not make sense or is told in a in such an absurd way. Like the test, the test. Okay, so the Fire Nation abducts Ong and puts them on the ship, and Eero comes and he's like, "Yo, hey, we're gonna do this test, and we're gonna like put some objects in front of you and see what happens." Put a can. They put, they put a candle in front of Ong. And, like, the fire bends by itself magically. And then they put, like, a, a thing of water on, on the table and then it becomes a circle. And then they put, like, a stone and then it, like, goes upright. And just keep in mind that 
He doesn't fucking know how to bend any of the elements <laughs> right now. <laughs> Other than like air at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, like, the narration, Katara knows Ong's name, but then they get to the southern air temple, and she's like, what's your name? And he's like, oh yeah, I'm Ong. <laughs> and, like, she finds out about the genocide from her grandmother before, like, Ong even knows a hundred years have even passed. Yeah, they just, what? like, don't tell him, like, a hundred years have passed for, like, a while. <laughs> oh my god. It, yeah. Ugh. The story of this is just, it's so ripped apart. It's so bad. And, like, they bring up, like, the spirit world, like, in the very beginning for, like, no reason. <laughs> so, but it's not even brought up in the actual TV show oh, yeah, until, it's like, a, halfway right. at least yeah. through season one. I think it's, like, even later than that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can see my face right now. Next question. <laughs> um... How would you rate the battles in the movie from oh, a scale okay. of if this Go is a full noodle okay. fight to even better than the show? Okay, so you know how in a lot of action movies we've seen, we've had a problem mm -hmm. with it cutting way too fast. Mm -hmm. This is the opposite problem. It <laughs> is so slow, and there's so many like long takes for no reason. And there are like long takes, there's slow mo. There's, there's slow mo. Zooming there's for like no reason. Th there's zoom ins within the slow mo that are like not slow what? though. It's really weird, and like yeah, the, and just so the action is like it. it the the editing is so slow that like you don't like get any sense of like power with the action at all. It's just it looks like so like flimsy and like who cares. And, and, like, the thing is, is that there's so many times where it's, like, a few people versus so many people. Hmm. But, like, a couple of people will rush in and do, like, a punch and a kick, and then they get, like, blown away. And all of their comrades just stand there, like, ready. I'm ready to fight. Even though it's, like, it would make sense if you're trying to capture this person if you all overwhelm this guy <laughs> or even like you know use firebending which probably some of them would be able to do at least you know like so... in the back if they need like five million hours to do one <laughs> firebending move they have the time yeah <laughs> and also oh in any of the editing it's not just for the action scenes though there are so many scenes where like literally just that they don't cut for like no reason <laughs> it's really weird and then there's there's that moment where like Aang is, like, talking to Katara and Sokka, and, like, it just cuts back and forth between two shots that's, like, really close up to their faces, and it's, like, the exact same shots back and forth, back and forth, and it's really weird. Like, you can see their eyelashes. <laughs> you could probably see their pores if it's, you really wanted to look. It's just, like, why is this happening? It's just, the editing of this is so weird. So, yeah. But yeah, the action sucks. <laughs> I, I, so I, I guess Puno the fight is the conclusion. <laughs> so bad. Um, can you guys guess when this movie was made? I already looked at the Well, answer. it was released in 2010, but I think I saw it was filming in, like, 2008 and 2009. So. Oh, okay, so you guys already do the answer well, yeah. to the question. Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> How did you both feel seeing Azula at the end? Who cares? <laughs> She's not scary at all. She's oh, yeah, she does not look sick. scary. Bella was saying that she just looks like a confused child. <laughs> yeah, so she fit right in with everyone else. <laughs> it's like it's a confused like, child who is like told like a like a to like okay. Imagine like I don't know. I guess well I, I say okay, like try to I'm just thinking, like try to imagine like Tara, if someone told you to like look like evil, like <laughs> it doesn't work because <laughs> you don't look evil. <laughs> It just seemed like here's some like nice kid who's like being told to look mean. <laughs> it doesn't work. No. And the, the thing is that she she's only like what two years younger than Zuko, actually, and she looks like she's like Aang's age. Like, she looks she's like 12. thirteen, while Zuko looks like twenty two. Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> and like the height difference between him and like the the white the white boy who plays Aang, he's like. Aang, like, like, literally comes up to, like, his lower back. His lower back or something. <laughs> and he's supposed to be, like, 12. And I'm just like, this kid looks like he's 8 or 9. <laughs> and he's with his dad. 
Also, Iroh looks like he's like 40, like not even that old. He's so oh like Yeah, I, I commented, there was this other uh, like old dude, I think in the Earth Kingdom, and I was like, he looks like he could be Iroh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he had the gray hair, the beard, everything, and I was like, what the fuck were they thinking? <laughs> All right, I guess this leads into the next question, question seven, which is, how sad did it make you feel that they thought they would be getting a sequel? <sighs> like, here's they the thing. I, I mentioned this because, like, you know, Jet is not in this movie at all, right? And, no, like, yeah. see, in season one, Jet doesn't seem very important. So, like, okay, fine. But, like, he's very important in season two. So, like, yeah. how, like, would that supposed to have worked? And, like, um, what's it? The, uh, forgot his name. There's Suki isn't there either. So there's no Suki. Um, the, there's, like, the, the Earthbender, like, old Earthbender guy who, like, Boobie? is some, Boobie's yeah, not he's, there. he's not there. So, like, there's all the, of these the people. The dude for Katara and Sokka is not there either. Like. None of the side characters yeah, and again, are it's besides like, UA. Like, you could maybe argue that, okay, they're not important for season one, but, like, they really are important for later stuff, so it's like, this doesn't make any sense. Also, no. I just I just looked up the guy who plays Iroh. In 2010, he would have been 47. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> so, so useful. Yeah. So, yeah, it just, it doesn't make any sense that, like, even from a story, like, even ignoring the whole fact, like, the movie's bad, so why would they make a sequel? But, like, even from a storytelling perspective, they did not set this up for the sequels at all. No. So, besides the really generic stuff of, like, the Fire Lord exists and he's bad. Like, that's, like, that's <laughs> it. Also, the Fire Lord of this is, like, really lame. He just looks like some dude who, like, talks, like, slowly. Yeah, like, <laughs> he's just, and then there are these points where, like, Zhao says that you know, the Fire Lord doesn't love his son. Like, he literally says it to all of the soldiers on their ship. And then at some point, he's like, yo, I think Zuko's the blue spirit. And Ozai's just like, what the fuck did you say about my son? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hated him! You banished him and gave him scarring emotionally and physically. Like, leave him alone. Oh, well, speaking <laughs> of scarring, Zuko's scar is, like, really minimal. but It looks like blush yeah. applied to his face. He oh, just wanted God. to be pretty. Yeah. Makeup was not his jam. He'll always get better, though. Oh, my God. Next oh. question. <laughs> I think you guys already kind of answered this question, but I guess I'll ask it in case you have any other closing remarks on it, which is, how did the infamous earthbending scene make you both feel? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, we we both like seen that clip reference so many times that it's like we knew it was coming. It, yeah. it is what it was. I don't know. It, the, the Asian the, guy again, in the front of the Earthbender, so he was having a fun time. The thing that, like, and the thing that, like, because I've heard so many talks about that Earthbending scene, but just like, it, like all of the other Earth, like all of the other bending was so slow and bad too. Like that's what I think hit me more was that just like how many times it was like I'm gonna twirl around for like two minutes and then like I get like a fucking sprinkler. It's like I don't <laughs> yeah. know. It, it's like that was the thing where it was like it, it's not just that scene. Like pretty much every time there is bending. Well, some of the fire bending is kind of quick, but again, like they have to use torches. So, uh, yeah, like all of the earth bending is slow. Ovens. Pretty much all the water bending is slow. Yeah. Okay, my last two questions are probably better for the well, my, the last question is definitely for the end. But this question nine is: Is this movie even worth watching? Ironically. Ah. Uh. It depends. Okay, not alone. Do not watch this no. alone. But if you have someone else to watch it with and just shit on it, then, like, it's not, like, I didn't, like, how do I phrase this? This didn't make me angry because mm. it was, it was, like, it was bad. It was, like, kind of entertainingly bad and also just kind of, like, what's the word? Impressively bad where you're, like, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, this reminds me of Cool Cat. Like, it's not enjoyably bad like Fateful Findings was. Mm. But I think it has that cool catness to it where you're just laughing at how awfully they handle certain things and just how much they fuck up the story that was hand-delivered to them yeah. on a silver platter. Yeah, but nah, like I don't the, know. The incompetence is really something because... <laughs> Again. How does an Asian man make a movie where all the mains are white? 
Zuko. No wait, what was that? What was that quote I said? We're literally like M Night said something like it like, was this is a quote on Wikipedia? It's the, mo- it's the most diverse movie ever. He said something like wait, that. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in it's in the well, the in Wikipedia. He literally said something like that. And then I was like, where are the black people? And then Valen was like, apparently there are black people. And they are there for two seconds, and that's it. They're like... Is it like one random Earth? Like It's like some random Earth village, and you see like a couple of them for two seconds, and then they're gone. And I'm just like, that's the black representation we get for this movie. And and also, (laughs) I want to mention this. Um, I don't know if this is true, but I swear I remember something like this. I think the girl who plays Katara... Um, hmm. I remember hearing that, like, the only reason she actually got the part was because, like, her dad or something was, like, a, a major investor or something. Oh, Wait, yeah. really? I, I heard that somewhere, and the thing is, I looked it up, it didn't, I, I didn't see anything specifically about that, but her dad, like, is, like, an actual, like, super rich, like, billionaire guy. So I know someone said it, some other reviewer, but, um, uh, the, the girl who plays UA, she went on to voice Asami later on, so... There you go. Which is something, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> she got more than 17 lines, at least. <laughs> uh, yeah. She lives at the end, I guess. She she had a better romance arc. Which I isn't guess. even... It's not even that good anyway, but sure. <laughs> Actually, okay, I want to kind of speak to that. Like, I know this is not, like, discussion about Korra, but, like, I remember, like, this year, I was, like, talking online about, like, shows with, like, uh, like, gay relationships, like, especially kids' shows, and I was like, mm. yeah, like, I was talking about a show that had, like, just recently aired, you know, in, like, the last few years. Like, I think this was, like, the, was this, like, the first, like, you know, time when, like, uh, in an animated kids' show, like, the, the one of the main characters in a gay relationship, and someone was like, uh, Korasami, and I'm like, wow, I completely forgot Korasami existed because of how was... forgettable it was. That was not very explicit, uh, I guess. They're really, I'm sorry, I, their relationship is just not handled well at all, and I know people are like, oh, but like it was in like 2014, and people were like, okay, fine, but like as itself, it's it's not done well. I'm sorry, but anyway, it, the, yeah, the UA here. No, literally, okay, like, once they show like UA, and they show like the guys like, you know, like, walking up into the Northern Earth Kingdom or whatever. It's literally just shows an image of Yue and Sokka, like, staring at each other. And, it's, and it literally, it's just voiceover, like, Sokka became best friends with Yue or something. Like, that's, like, that's really? how it's introduced. <laughs> there's, there's that scene where she's just like, yo, it, it's been such a nice few weeks with you. And we're just like, excuse that's, me? That's literally, no, <laughs> that is the first line she says, is it's been a great few weeks with you, Sokka. And it's like... It's been weeks. <laughs> it's been, I feel like it would been like an hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I. The story is just—it's so random. How, what they decide to use, what they don't use, how they use things that they do use—it's just so weird and bizarre. And like, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I didn't come away like angry from this. Actually, this is a, that's the question I was gonna thinking of asking. Hmm. Uh. Are we giving these movies ratings? Oh, great, great segue. Okay. Oh, I guess that's question 10. Yeah, question 10. Okay. So, so, you guys are not going to be giving these ratings with the chart because we're purposely watching bad movies, and I don't think that's much like with the old Hollywood films, it doesn't seem right to like give them ratings and stuff like that. However, you guys can still rate them on a scale of like barf bad to like you know, if I can come up with a catchy title for like to meh, I guess. <laughs> well, because here's here, my my thinking was that we maybe could rate them because like. In terms of like you know these Fair, are big budget bi- recent big budget Hollywood movies, so they do mm. fit the category of all the other stuff. Now the one kind of caveat is that again it would be two of us rating it, not three. So, mm. I mean, I could just like have our two ratings and then like I don't know multiply them by one point five or something. But like yeah, you could do that because I, I feel like yeah. I kind of do want to rate it. I don't know. What do you? Maybe think? can. But okay. basically, my last question was, what is your rating? <laughs> okay. So, so we're not doing the whole, like, 10 dinosaurs out of 10 or 10 broken laptops out no, of 10. No, like, I think us. we should actually do a rating because this, again, the idea is that, like, this is, you know, what the kind of movies we have been seeing, theoretically. That's true. So, All right. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so please. my rule for like bad ratings is I'm not going to give something a zero unless it makes me like actually angry. Mm-hmm. So this is not a zero. This is not a zero. Um, and I was kind of debating, am I even going to give it a one? I might give it a two, but I'm just like, because again, I'm like, it. I wasn't like miserable with watching it, but I'm like, you know, it's just so fucking incompetent though. Like, and the fact that again, people, like several people decided that this, this was a good idea in terms of what it was, unless the pure incompetence, and again, it's somewhat entertaining in the incompetence, but it's still so just impressively bad in that sense, I am going to give it a 1. I have to look at the chart, because this, this is definitely below anything I've given yeah. so far. I, it, like, I, I could kind of see the argument that it's at least like a little bit like entertaining in terms of how bad it is to maybe give it like a 2, but I think I don't think I can do that. I think I'll also just give it a one because I feel like if I watched this by myself, I would have actually just stopped watching it. That's also the only true. reason that this was any bit entertaining was the fact that I had another idiot with me watching this. <laughs> yeah, that's that's completely fair, also. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I will say it's not a zero. Yeah, we can agree that that it's not. It's not a okay. zero. It's not a zero. It's not rage inducing. It's also again, it's not. It's not, like, super boring, because, again, how of how, like, bad it is. Like, if you know the actual story, which most people do, like, if you've actually watched the original TV show, then you can just be like, wait, that that's not, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right. How did they get that wrong? Yeah. Like, how, how did they get it wrong that oh, that's not supposed to be swimming? <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking sky bison. He's supposed to fly. Wikipedia page. <laughs> I know, and like, okay, Appa honestly does like fucking nothing <laughs> in this whole thing. He's in like three scenes, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, and is he doesn't. Momo, it, the C- CGI it? doesn't look very good either. Momo does basically nothing too. He appears like twice in the whole yeah. movie, I think. Wow. So, yeah, it's it's bad, but I don't know. There's at least some kind of entertainment value, quote unquote. I don't know. It's you probably get more entertainment value watching this discussion than uh, yeah. Watching just, it just watch like other people's reviews of it, and that's yeah. good enough, honestly. So yeah. yeah, but I think yeah, the thing that I want to emphasize is that like any sort of like weird scenes that you see, like again the air the earth bending scene, or like some other maybe scenes you might have seen where it, like the action seems a little like weird or stuff like. Just keep in mind that st- stylistically happens throughout the entire movie. It's not just here's yeah. a weird clip. It's like no, like everything looks like that. It, it's not just one <laughs> janky thing that happens. It's the whole damn thing. So, so you're not yeah. missing out on much. <laughs> nope. But I guess are we done with the last Airbender? Yeah, let's, um... Okay, well, my, what is next for us? Um, okay, so this is actually another remake that we'll be watching. Um, so this this movie was an adaptation of a TV show. That was bad. So now we're gonna watch a movie remake of a movie that we previously didn't really like either, but this one had another remake, but we're not watching that. We're gonna watch The Mummy 2017. (laughs) We are AKA watching the Dark Universe. No, I was about to say attempt. we are watching the entirety of the Dark Universe <laughs> <laughs> next week. Oh, <laughs> uh, this see this I'm worried will be like really boring. I feel yeah. like the other like I feel like this like last year better at least had some like entertainment value and how like bad it was, but I feel like this is just gonna be so bland and like who gives a fuck. So I'm gonna have to actually find out what happens in this movie. Yeah, because at least you, we all have like some, you know, familiarity with like last with Avatar. So yeah, but I mean, I guess you could ask stuff related to the 1932 movie. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean that that's the one we all have seen. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we Recently. are watching. <laughs> so yes, tune in next week for the entirety of the Dark Universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. The culmination of the epic saga. Yep. Yep. The beginning and the end. <laughs> They're so efficient, they got through the whole thing in one movie. <laughs> and we'll be so efficient that we get through the whole thing too. <laughs> Perhaps. 
Okay. Bye. Bye. Woo.